You were there. You heard Xi Jinping. He mentioned the insurance industry and the opening up at least twice. Twice, yes. Music to your ears or what? No, it is. It's. Uh, I think there's a consistency in the message you saw. Uh, you know, going into the Party Congress, I think at the China Development Forum, you know, our meetings with the regulators as they've consolidated, and again here today, uh, I think you know, for the insurance in China, uh, has gone through a couple of major reforms. It's mm. gone through a regulatory reform with what they call CROS, which yes. is a, a, a very effective new capital regime in place. Uh, there's a, a regulatory look to what the role of insurers are versus banks that was that was uh, you know, quite well handled, I think, and. Uh, all of it creates, you know, a, a, a more level playing field for a foreign insurer, you know, a little harder push for innovation, a lot of things that are good for us. But you have a 50-50 joint venture with the big group in China, CIDIC. Correct. Would you want to even alter that arrangement? Would you want to see higher uh, caps or not, or uh, the increase of the caps so you could take a majority control? Well, the uh, CIDIC has been an outstanding partner. It goes back to, t to 2000. So we're in, we're in Asia for 90 years, 170-year-old firm, uh, and 18 years effectively here partnering with CIDIC, and it's been uh, uh, a pretty successful partnership. It, it's, I guess it's a, it's a difficult question. Would I rather we navigated China without the help of a firm like CIDIC? No. I think it's been a really successful JV. We do a lot well together. Um, the... You know, would I like more economic interest in something that's as successful as it is and growing as it is? Of course. And I think Chairman Chang, if he was sitting here, would tell you the same thing. So there's no immediate plans to, to do anything around the structure. Um, but I think from a flexibility point of view, from the government's point of view, being open to foreign capital to fund their ambition for ensuring you know, effectively twice the level of penetration in the market is, is a good strategic decision. What do you think the details will be if they do eventually come out? Because the Chinese leadership oftentimes has been long on promises but short on details, especially opening up the financial services. We heard in November details on banks. They are going to raise the caps on foreign ownership, but yet we don't have any details. In insurance, uh, it was my understanding that late last year that they were going to allow by 2020 at least majority ownership, 51-49, and then a complete scrapping of those limits two years later. Do you think that's the kind of the roadmap they're looking at? Well, I, I think it's multidimensional. I think to your point on ownership, yes, and both asset management and in the insurance uh, space, to, exactly to your, your point and, and uh, your timetables. I think more importantly uh, for someone positioned the way we are, the scope, again, you heard uh, the president's comments about, you know, they wanted the insurers to provide, it's a broader range of capabilities mm -hmm. to, the, to the consumer. And, uh, you know, th this is a you know, we look at this market as we can bring anything from our capabilities in micro insurance that we do on mobile in Africa right. to our most sophisticated asset management products with funds coming in and out of China. You know, we have investors that want to invest here. We have strategies for that. We have investors that want and Chinese investors that want to invest long term in the market uh, in China and also abroad. All those fit in the broadening what's already in place structurally. And they want more innovation, more products from you, right? Because the insurance industry, at least the domestic, a lot of the players are in the middle of a regulator driven cleanup, if you will. And now there's a super regulator on, on top of that with the CIRC yeah. being folded into a super regulator. Are, do you find yourself in a sweet spot, though? We are. So we're, we have a unique position at 170 of being uh, in the challenger space here. Yeah. You know, we're, yeah. we're uh, about 1% of the market, which you wouldn't think of a firm of our size globally. Um, but what does that mean? It means we have a fully digital, fully cloud-based platform uh, you know, the, almost the entire transaction can be done on mobile. It uses the WeChat payment yeah. technology for both the collection of premium and the dispersion of, of a, if there's a claim. Um, so it's highly scalable. Uh, we have licenses in 77 cities, 17 provinces. So our issue is growing into the consumer demand, the footprint. And I think for the industry, candidly, transitioning from bank savings products to the more traditional protection, protection products is what... Because you weren't in those savings no, products that this, were more risky. And this is what insurers do best, right? Is Our job is intermediate term and long term savings and protection. That's where we belong in the capital stack. Where's the opportunity really to boost the percentage of insurance coverage in China up to, I guess, right now it's below 3% of GDP. 2.4. 24 The yeah. U.S. is 7 uh, The U.K. and Japan, they're 10%. Yeah. Uh, where is China heading? With China the rising wants middle class. The, the you know the most of the politicians we talked to wanted around five, and they'd like it there sooner than later. Yeah. The, to give you an idea, the gap between the existing position and a five would be about the, just the difference would be about the size of the entire U.S. market. So you know it's a massive uh, increase in, in uh, balance sheet need and service and product, uh, but it also in social protection. The 
and how do you define it? I guess the easiest way to define it would be, uh, and you see this across Asia, savings rate, people self-insure. Yeah. So that number is close to 40% in China. Uh, you know, it's we, we can de-risk that consumer's position instead of them insuring themselves effectively. We can get that money back in the real economy. That's yeah. good for them. That's good for the government. That's good for our shareholders and stakeholders. How's new business profit looking at? That's a key measure for future business if, indeed, you're going to be getting a lot more favorable treatment, if you will, and also business. Uh, do you see that? Uh, it would, I think it more than doubled. For you in it, 20, it did, and, it, uh, uh, and it's you know we're up to we're about a million clients, which in any other market would be a lot. About two million policies in China. That means we've got a long way to go. Uh, it's a uh, the profitability of what we sell here is good, uh, and the you know and the value for the consumer is very good, and the and the experience you know one of the things about fintech and innovation here is it, where where it impacts insurance is the consumer's expectation of how they interact with you. So this is some of our best platforms and best technology. Very quickly, I believe you've applied for a WUFI for management, asset management through eSpring Investments Correct. in Asia. How's that progressing really quickly? It uh, seems to be going fine. Everybody's, uh, you know, no, no snags, roadblocks, uh, you know, moving along at pace. So, again, it's consistent with the government's comments. All right. Mike Wells, Prudential CEO, thanks so much for your time. My pleasure.